Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com and I'm thrilled to be collaborating with CraftGalley.com on the release of their Peony Bliss stamp set. I'm sharing three completely different ways to use this stamp set today and also sharing a little bit about their anniversary and the COVID-19 fundraiser they're doing. To start this card, I'm going to stamp this gorgeous hand-drawn peony arrangement on a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White. This is the 80 pound. It's A2 size and I'm stamping it in Altenew Permanent Black Ink, which is a Copic Safe Ink. Once I have it stamped, I'm going to heat set it a bit because I really don't like to wait for things to dry. So I'm going to start off with my leaves and I'm using the BG90 Copic family. So I have 90, 93, 96, and 99. This is a beautiful soft green. It's very desaturated and it's almost like a eucalyptus leaf color. And I just think it adds just such a nice soft touch to the projects. So I kind of cover it with the lightest color and then I'm bringing in my darkest values and then blending that out with the two mid-tones. And I'm adding some of the detail that um, has been drawn into the stamp set, but not all of it. I wanna make sure I keep some highlight areas so there's a variance in color. Moving on to the peony petals, I'm gonna be using R21, R22, R24, and R29. This is one of my favorite kind of reddish coral type colors in the Copic family. When coloring flowers, I always use the same method. I add shadow to the base of the petal where the petals overlap and cast a shadow and underneath any fold in the petal. So you can see there's a fold at the tip of this petal and you can see I'm putting some shadow underneath that. These colors blend so effortless, effortlessly and I just love this color palette. So while I'm coloring, I'll talk a little bit about this stamp set. So originally, Craft Galley was going to release this to celebrate their third anniversary. If you have not been to craftgalley.com and done a little bit of online shopping there, I encourage you to do so. They carry many of your favorite brands, such as Wow Embossing Powder, Altenew, um, Hero Arts, just many of the products that you know and love. Um, so originally, so let me just talk about the card. So this is Y21, Y26, YR24, and E19. And then as I'm talking a little bit about the fundraiser, the markers will be listed up above. I will also have the markers that I use listed in my blog post as well. I'll have a link to the blog post down below, as well as all of the supplies. So originally this release was going to be to celebrate Craft Galley's third anniversary. And Given the climate and what is happening globally in our country, as well as all of the other countries across the world, Craft Galley felt like this would be a perfect time to give back to the community. So from April 1st to the 15th of 2020, 50% of all proceeds made from their online store, craftgalley.com, will be donated to COVID-19 Response Fund for Feeding America. With school closures, job destruction, disruptions, health risk, millions of Americans will turn to food banks for much needed support. They can't do it alone. They need your help. So if you are in the market for some crafty supplies, go ahead and check them out at craftgalley.com. Now what I'm doing with the card right now is something I had never done before. I'm using the all to new classy stripe stencil and I have the BG70 marker. I wanted a background on this image and I didn't want to fussy cut my image. I wanted to keep everything intact. I didn't want to do a freehand or freestyle background. So I grabbed a stencil and wanted to add some stripes. So I'm just using my marker and going across these stripes here. It's a super light color. So it's very forgiving when you're making your stripes. One thing that you don't want to do is drag your marker over top of the flower that you've already colored it will drag that color out because this is such a lighter it's going to drag that color out into your cardstock and smear those colors so just make sure you pick up your marker and skip over the flower and i just love how that turned out um, if you didn't want to use the brush nib you could also use the chisel nib if you wanted a really sharp line but i wanted to have some soft edges to my stripes so now I have BG75 and BG72, and I'm just filling in these little buds, getting those colored up. And this card is almost done. For the centers, I use those BG70 markers as well, just to keep the color palette pretty minimal. I like to keep it to three colors if I can. 
So I added a sentiment and some Pretty Pink Posh Marshmallow Confetti. And I just love how the stripes and the coloring on the flower turned out. If you have used Copic markers with your stencils like this before, let me know in the comments down below. Here I have a piece of Altenew Spicy Yogurt cardstock and I've cut it with a rounded rectangle. I've stamped the flower image and also a sentiment with Wow Embossing Ink. And I've used the Wow Bonding Powder and sprinkled that on. I'm going to heat set it and immediately press on a piece of Wow Fab Foil and I'm using the bright gold color today. I did go ahead and try this out and just used a bone folder to really press on the foil from the back of the cardstock, but I felt like I got the best result when I actually ran that through my die cutting machine. No dies or anything, but just use the die cutting machine to really press that foil on. I got a super clear image, so that's what I would recommend. I put five strips of Altenew Golden Stream washi tape on my background panel, and then I just popped up the rounded rectangle, added a few gold confetti to finish off the card. Moving on to the last card, which is my favorite of the bunch, I'm inking up the stamp with Distress Oxide ink, and I'm gonna stamp it in two different places on a piece of Saunders Waterford High White Hot Press paper. So normally I use a rough paper, but it is really challenging to stamp on a rough paper, especially with such a intricate stamp. So I'm using their hot press version here, which stamped beautifully. And I was really impressed at how well the pigments moved as well. Traditionally, I haven't liked hot press paper too much, but this one was really quite fun to work with. So to paint this flower, I'm dropping in clean, clear water with a number two round brush from the Wonder Forest, and I am dropping in French red at the base of each of the petals, and I'm just letting the water take it to the tip of the petals. So wherever it ends up is where it's going to stay. So it's unusual for me to kind of just leave things alone as much as I am here. Normally, I want to fiddle with the pigments and kind of move them around. I really just let it fade out to white and you don't really see the beauty of this technique until you have more of the petals done and, and the flower is complete. So you can really see that here. What's important with watercolor is you want to make sure that the petal is completely dry before you paint the petal next to it so that the colors don't blend together. You wanna to make sure that you have crisp and definitive edges in between each one of those petals. The way to do that is let the petals dry in between. So I'm doing the same thing with the leaves and for the leaves I'm using nitroso green. For the buds I'm gonna be using Mayan turquoise. These are handmade watercolors from the letter Sparrow. They're absolutely gorgeous and really a dream to work with. Um, they are on the higher end. So if you already have your own tube paints but you like the look of this mini palette, I'll have a link down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I'm, I'm not an affiliate with either Letter Sparrow or the company that makes this small palette. I just really like them. I think they're awesome for travel, especially. And I like how I can get 28 colors on my desk at one time without it taking up my whole desk. So I'll put a link to it down below. And so I'm just finishing up with these um, little flowers, little flower buds, and I'm doing, there's, they're kind of like halved, so there's like two parts to each of these little buds, and I'm doing one side dark, and then the other one a little more muted. I'm just using that same Mayan turquoise and splattering on some pigment there, adding a couple extra drops where I felt like I needed a little more, and then I will stamp a sentiment with frayed leaf ink. Is that frayed leaf? No, I think it's Forest Glades crisp dye ink. And there's the finished card. For the centers, I just use that same Mayan turquoise, which I think is just a beautiful color. And this is my favorite card of the bunch. I love that there's two different images on it and that green and purple it, with the navy just really speaks to me. So I hope that you guys enjoyed these cards today. Do be sure to check out Craft Galley and I hope that you consider supporting the COVID-19 response Fund for Feeding America by shopping in their online store from April 1st to the 15th. I'll have a link to them down below. Huge thanks to Craft Galley for inviting me to collaborate with them and a huge thanks to you guys for joining me today. If you like this video, consider subscribing, liking, and ringing the bell down below and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.